Right, so today we are going to begin with the second half of surface chemistry. First half we have adsorption, absorption, free and friendage, absorption, isotherms, all these sub cheese we have used to be discussed, zeolites, catalysts, all this we have discussed in the first lecture. Now, today we are going to start with the second section of surface chemistry, which includes the colloidal system. Okay? क्या होता है एक कोलोइडल सिस्टम हम क्या बोलते हैं कि जैसे फॉर एग्जांपल हमने सोडियम क्लोराइड ले लिया सोडियम क्लोराइड को इफ वी आर पुटिंग इट इन वाटर व्हाट विल यू सी यू विल सी वन फेस यू कैन नॉट सी सॉल्ट सेपरेटली एंड वाटर सेपरेटली ठीक है सारे सॉल्यूशंस दे आर सेड टू बी ट्रू सॉल्यूशंस बट इफ वी पुट NaCl इन बेंजीन we see that there are the phases they can be differently seen NaCl becomes something you know something like jelly like in it and that is what a colloidal system is so when we talking of any colloidal system we basically say that we are uh, classifying the solutions into three one is the true solutions one is the colloids and one is the suspensions but when we talking of a colloid we say that colloid that is not a substance but it is a system or it is a phase of a substance right jaise for example we saying that there are certain elements or certain compounds which may behave as uh, true solutions when put in one medium or they may behave as colloids if they are put in some other medium theek hai so that is what a colloidal system is so when we are saying that a finally divided substances we are saying that finally divided substances of any substance of any substance lying in the range of 100 to 1000 nanometer One, uh, sorry, one to one thousand nanometer. This is the diameter or particle size we are talking of over here, right? So any substance which is finely divided, such that it has a particle size of one to one thousand nanometer, and then we disperse is it in any medium, dispersed in any medium. forms a colloid theek hai this is what is going to be a colloidal system right when we talking of colloidal systems we say that the colloidal systems or colloidal solutions they are intermediate between true solutions and suspensions theek hai they are going to be intermediate between true solutions and suspensions we say that any colloidal system consists of two phases or in other words a colloidal system is a two phased system in which there is one a uh, discontinuous phase a discontinuous phase which is known as the dispersed phase theek hai and there is a continuous medium continuous medium which is known as the dispersion medium so basically what we are saying over here that any colloidal solution it is going to consist of a dispersed phase and a dispersion medium just as in the case of true solution there is a solute and a solvent okay so dispersed phase and a dispersion medium depending upon the kind of dispersed phase and dispersion medium we classify different colloidal systems Okay so what are these 
different colloidal systems as i just told you that these different colloidal systems they depend upon the type of dispersed phase and dispersion medium right now if we are taking dispersed phase i am writing as dp dispersion medium i am writing as dm then this is the type of colloid and we are going to do examples of each type right now if we say that we are taking the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium both as gases then that becomes a continuous system and it is not taken as an example or as a type of colloid okay so if dispersed phase and dispersion medium both are gases it is not going to make a colloid but it is going to make a true solution the first kind which we are going to do is we are taking the dispersed phase as liquid and dispersion medium as gas this is known as aerosol this is known as aerosol of liquids okay and examples which we can take over here is fog clouds mist all these they are example of aerosol of liquids the second we are going to take solid in gas this is how you call it also solid in gas right so we're saying solid in gas it means that the dispersion uh, the dispersed phase is solid and the dispersion medium that is going to be gas okay this is known as aerosol of solids right so in both the cases you can see here the dispersion medium is gases both they are known as aerosols example which we can take over here is smoke dust these are a few examples then the third one which we are going to take that is gas in liquid gas in liquid this is known as foam right example which we can take over here is soap soap ka jo froth hota hai theek hai that is going to be an example then whipped cream whipped cream is also an example of this and even the shaving foam shaving foam that is also an example of this kind then the next one fourth we are going to take liquid and liquid this is known as emulsion right and example the most common example which we can take over here is oil oh, sorry milk first take the example of milk then emulsified oils and also certain medicines the uh, liquid syrups which are given to small children pediatric liquids they come under this category theek hai fir uske baad hamare paas aa jata hai solid and liquid solid and liquid this is known as a sole an example of sole is uh, paints starch in water and also proteins theek hai fir uske baad the next one sixth we are going to take is gas in solid this is known as solid foam an example which we can take over here is that of pure 
pubis stone, right? Pubis stone is that red color stone which is generally used to uh, scrub feet and all the dead skin in the feet. That is the same, right? Then another example which you can take over here is foam rubber. <coughs> foam rubber is the substance by which mattresses they are made. That is also an example of this. Okay? So if you take out the cover of the mattress, you can see inside that there are a lot of air spaces which are present. So that is gas in the solid. Right? Then number seven is liquid. Liquid in solid. The exact uh, the kind of colloidal system that is known as gel. An example which we can take over here is cheese, jelly. All these they are examples. Butter is an example of emulsion. Okay, that is not a gel. Okay, so we have cheese, we have jelly, then we have boot polish. Boot polish, etc. Okay. Then last jo baar pa sata hai, that is solid and sol, solid and solid, and the emulsion that is known as solid sole. Examples of this is colored glass, and also the jet stones. The gemstones which we wear. Okay? These are the examples. So these are the type of colloids depending upon the type of dispersed phase and dispersion medium. So if you're looking at the example, almost everything which we are using in our day-to-day -day life, they all are colloids. Right? Just say for example, we have milk. Milk is a colloid. We have uh, creams, we have paints, we have starch, smoke, fog, clouds, everything that is com coming under colloid. So colloidal system is a very important system which has a vast study. Okay? In fact, you can see there's, uh, there's one full course which can be done on only colloids. Specialization which is done only on this. Okay? Then after that, let's go on to the classification of the colloids. Classification of the colloids. This classification of the colloids that depends upon the forces of attraction between the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium. Okay? It is going to depend what kind of forces of attraction are present in dispersed phase and dispersion medium. On the basis of this, we classify colloids into number one, leophilic colloids. When we talking of leophilic colloids, philic over here uh, means affinity. So in leophilic colloids, we generally say that the dispersed phase has affinity for has affinity for dispersion medium, right? This kind of colloids, for example, we can talk of proteins, we can talk of starch, all these they come under this category, right? So protein, starch, rubber, rubber also. The molecules of all these systems when we are talking of protein, starch or rubber, the molecules of all these systems, they are large size molecules. So if they are large size molecules, the diameter of these molecules is anything between 100 to 1000 nanometers which come in the colloidal range. Therefore, they form the colloids. Okay? Now in this case, as I have already said that the dispersed phase has a great affinity for the dispersion medium and if we are taking the dispersion medium as water then they are known as hydrophilic colloids okay? then they are known as hydrophilic colloids these colloids, they are quite stable in nature because once the uh, dispersed phase and dispersion medium, they are uh, shaken together, they form the new colloids. And
and in that case if you are trying to separate the uh, dispersed phase from the dispersion medium or you are trying to precipitate the dispersed phase in the dispersion medium that is not possible in this case. So that is why we are saying, saying that it is stable. Then thirdly if we are evaporating the neophilic colloids in that case what is going to happen we are going to get a residue okay? now if this residue is again put in the dispersion medium it is going to yield back the neophilic colloid therefore we say that the neophilic colloid they are reversible in nature which means that again if we are mixing the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium we can very easily get the colloid back clear the second type of colloid which we have they are known as neophobic colloids the neophobic colloids they are otherwise the you can say the particles of the dispersed phase they are small in size in fact they are smaller than they do not come in the range of 1 to 1000 nanometers so therefore they aggregate right aggregate to form clusters or they aggregate in such a manner that the size now becomes in between 1 to 1000 nanometer they become or they come in between 1 to 1000 nanometer which is a colloidal range so the particles of the dispersed phase in case of neophobic colloids they are going to be smaller they get aggregated and they become closer to each other as a result of which they become they make clusters and these clusters they come in between range of 1 to 1000 nanometers therefore they start making the colloids okay? now in this case the dispersed phase has no affinity for the dispersion medium the dispersed phase has no affinity for the dispersion medium right and these colloids if we put some electrolyte in it if an electrolyte is added the dispersed phase they get coagulated this we will study later they get coagulated therefore we say that these are not stable or they are unstable in nature they are not stable or they are going to be unstable in nature okay and also if we are using water as the dispersion medium then these are known as what hydrophobic okay so they are known as hydrophobic and once we say that if we try to evaporate the leophobic colloids so the residue cannot be just mixed with the dispersion uh, with the dispersed uh, dispersion medium to make the colloid again okay so that is why we say that these are irreversible in nature okay they are going to be irreversible in nature so we've done two types of colloids over here one is the neophilic and the other one that is neophobic depending upon its properties let's differentiate between the uh, two types of colloids over here okay so let's differentiate between the neophilic colloids and neophobic colloids neophilic and neophobic colloids the first property according to which we are going to differentiate the two that is the surface tension now in case of neophilic colloids the surface tension is lower 
ठीक है नाउ इट इज लोअर टू वॉट इट इज लोअर टू दैट ऑफ द डिस्पोजन मीडियम इट इज लोअर टू दैट ऑफ द मीडियम वेर एज इन केस ऑफ न्यूफोबिक द सर्फिस टेंशन इज सेम एज दैट as that of the medium theek hai then number 2 the second property is viscosity viscosity in neophilic is higher than that of the medium theek hai whereas in neophobic it is the same as that of the medium the second difference theek okay? hai viscosity the third difference is that the neophilic colloids they are reversible in nature we have just discussed this reversible and this is going to be irreversible in nature theek okay? hai fir uske baad this also we have already said that this is more stable right and this is going to be less stable theek hai fir uske baad number 5 particles of lyophilic colloids the dispersed phase of the lyophilic colloids the particles of the dispersed phase can't be seen sorry can be seen can be seen not can it can be seen under ultra microscope ultra microscope whereas those of the lyophobic they can also be detected these can be detected under ultra microscope ठीक है फिर उसके बाद नेक्स्ट जो हमारे पास आता है इन दिस केस द सिक्स डिफरेंस इज दैट पार्टिकल्स मे माइग्रेट पार्टिकल्स मे माइग्रेट इन एनी डायरेक्शन व्हाट डू वी अंडरस्टैंड बाय दिस पर्टिकुलर पॉइंट are passing electric current through a lyophilic colloid the electric field has no effect on the particles right it is not essential over here that the particles they are going to either migrate towards the cathode or they are going to migrate towards the anode they do not have any specific direction whereas the lyophobic colloids they are very highly affected by the electric field they are very highly affected by the electric field which means that the particles may either direct themselves towards the cathode or they may be directed towards the anode theek hai fir uske baad next jo aata hai in this case lyophilic addition of small electrolyte addition of small electrolyte has no effect on the lyophilic which means that if we putting up any electrolyte that electrolyte is not going to destroy the lyophilic colloids right but if that electrolyte is added to lyophobic a process of coagulation or precipitation occurs or precipitation occurs which means that if we are putting any uh, electrolyte in a <coughs> lyophobic colloid that is going to destroy the colloid theek hai lyophilic colloids they do not get destroyed 
In case of leophilic colloids, extensive hydration can take place. Extensive hydration, which means that if we are taking starch, and in starch we are putting water, what will keep on happen happening? That will keep on getting diluted. Okay? So you can keep putting water in it and extensive hydration that takes place in neophilic or in other words we can also explain this that the process of inhibition takes place over here. What do we understand by the uh, process of inhibition? That is swelling up in water. So when we are taking gelatin or we are taking jelly so the crystals of gelatin or jelly when they are put in water they swell up right that is the process of inhibition whereas in case of leophobic no hydration takes place hydration is not a common property of leophobic colloids so this is the difference just go through them once again the first one in leophilic colloid the surface tension is going to be lower than that of the medium whereas in leophobic it is same Right? In leophilic, viscosity is higher. In leophobic, the viscosity is same. Then, leophilic are reversible, leophobic are irreversible, leophilic are more stable, leophobic are less stable. In this, leophilic dispersed dispersion, uh, this dispersed phase can be seen under the under microscope. Right? Whereas there it cannot be detected. That there also it can be seen. Right? In this case, particles may migrate in different directions, which means they do not have much effect of electric field. If uh, we are putting a leophilic colloid in the electric field, the particles, they are not directed towards cathode and anode. But in case of leophobic, they are highly affected. Okay? The next addition of small electrolyte, if we put in leophilic, there is going to be no effect. But on that case, the leophobic colloids, they get precipitated or they get destroyed. Then the last one, extensive hydration takes place in leophilic, whereas no hydration is going to take place in leophobic. Right? Now, these are the two types of colloids which we have done. In the next section, we are going to do types of solutions. Alright, when we are doing types of solutions, we say... <coughs> We say that the types of solutions, they are going to depend upon the particle size of the dispersed phase, right? Depending upon the particle size, we classify the solutions into true solutions, right? We classify them into colloidal solutions. classify them into suspensions. Right? So these are the three types. The true solutions, they are also known as molecular solutions. So we are saying that true solutions, they can also be termed as molecular solutions. The colloidal solutions, they are known as colloidal dispersions. Colloidal dispersions and suspensions, they are known as coarse coarse suspensions. Okay? So this is how we classify them. When we are differentiating between the three, in case of true solutions, the particle size that is less than 1 nanometer, okay? over here in colloidal solution, the particle size is anything between 1 to 1000 nanometers and in suspensions, the particle size is greater than greater than 1000 nanometers. Okay? Then second, we say that the true solutions, they are invisible. Under ultra microscope. For example, over here, we can take the example of a salt solution. So if you are trying to see the salt particles even under ultra 
under microscope we will not be able to see theek hai whereas these are visible only under ultra microscope now over here we can take the example of milk when we are looking at milk what can we visualize we can see milk as one single phase isn't it but we are saying that milk is a colloidal solution which means that there are soluble fats which are dissolved in water so water is the dispersion medium over here and the dispersed phase that is going to be the soluble fats right so when we try to see under the ultra microscope we can see the soluble particles that is the fat particles inside the milk separately okay whereas in case of suspensions we can see it under naked eye for example sand and water so if you put in sand and water we can see the sand particles with naked eye we do not need a microscope to see the sand particles so that is what a suspension is so example of true solution which we can take is sodium chloride in water or common salt in water colloidal solution we can take milk theek hai and suspensions we can take sand in water then the next difference is that the true solutions they diffuse through parchment membrane what do we understand by parchment membrane parchment membrane means uh, basically it is a membrane cell membrane of pig that is what the parchment membrane is the pore size in case of parchment membrane that is very very small okay so the true solutions they can diffuse through parchment membrane very easily and very quickly whereas these diffuse through parchment membrane very slowly theek hai and in case of suspensions there is no diffusion at all so this is another point of difference which we can see between the three that is true solutions colloidal solutions and suspensions theek hai fir uske baad the next difference between the three is that the filtration we say that true solutions they the particles they pass through ordinary filter paper as well as parchment paper theek hai so they pass through ordinary filter paper as well as parchment membrane whereas in colloidal solution the uh, they pass through filter paper but not through parchment membrane so over here the colloidal particles pass through filter paper but not through parchment membrane but when we are looking at suspensions over here in case of suspensions they neither pass through parchment membrane nor through ordinary filter paper so we can write that the passing is impossible through both theek hai then there is a very very important uh, difference between the three between the three what is that that is in case of true solutions there is no scattering of light takes place now the particle size in this case is very very small no scattering of light takes place so the particle size is very very small they are unable to scatter light this scattering of light that is that was first absorbed uh, observed by tyndall therefore it is known as the tyndall effect theek hai so the true solution they do not show tyndall effect what is tyndall effect whenever we are passing a beam of light through any solution if that beam of light is visible that is what tyndall effect is 
right? So when we're talking of Tyndall effect, there is a kind of the beam of light which we can see that is known as the Tyndall cone, right? So whenever a Tyndall cone is formed by any solution, that solution is said to be showing the Tyndall effect. We will do this in detail later. Similarly, when we're talking of colloidal solutions, in this case, because the particle size is in between, so scattering of light is possible. So the colloidal solution, they show Tyndall effect. Whereas in case of suspensions, again the particle size is very large. It is unable to break the scattering of light. Therefore, Suspensions do not show in the effect. Right? So these are the differences between the three. Now today what we are going to do is we are going to prepare the colloids. We have two types of colloids which we have studied. One is the neophilic colloid and the second one that is the neophobic colloids. So we are going to prepare both these colloids today. Right? So let's go on to the methods of preparation of colloids. Preparation of colloids. When we are talking of neophilic colloids, in case of neophilic colloids, it is very easy to prepare the neophilic colloids. We just mix the dispersed phase and the dispersion medium, provided that the particle size of the dispersed phase should be in between 1 nanometer to 1000 nanometers. So for making neophilic colloids, because the dispersed phase has a great affinity for the dispersion medium, we simply mix them and hence the neophilic colloid that can be formed. An example which we can take over here is that of jelly. Right? You know how jelly is formed. There are crystals of jelly which are readily available in the market. So you just take that jelly crystals, pour hot water in it, right? Not very hot. Uh, say it should be less than the boiling point of water. That is that warm it should be. So we're putting that water, we're mixing that water with the jelly crystals. We are just stirring it continuously till all the crystals they dissolve evenly in the entire mixture. Right? And after that, we refrigerate it. We do not put it in the freezer, we put it in the fridge only, in the lower compartment. And after say 3 to 4 hours, we get a colloid which is a jelly. Okay, so that is the edible jelly which is generally made at home for eating. So this is what a neophilic colloid is. Even starch is a neophilic colloid. So you know when you boil rice, and after that, when you uh, uh, strain the water from it, if you keep that water for say one or two hours, you will see a jelly-like formation of starch has taken place. Okay? So leophilic colloid is easy to form. The question over here is the formation of leophobic colloids which needs specific methods for preparation. The first method which we are going to do, we are known as They are known as dispersion methods. Okay? Now what is dispersion methods? In this case, the first kind of method which we use in, usually use is mechanical dispersion. What do we understand by mechanical dispersion? In this, the particle size or suspension. A suspension is taken. At that suspension, it is uh, uh, you can say it is put into metal grinders, right? So those metal grinders, they have two rotators, one which is at the bottom and the other one which is at the top. From above, we put the or we pour the suspension inside this grinder and the movement of the upper and the lower metal disc, that is one is moving clockwise and the other one is moving anti-clockwise. As a result of which, the particle size of the suspension that is lower down to the size of the colloid, right? And that colloid particle which are formed over here, they are mixed with the suitable dispersion medium in order to form the colloid. So this is what mechanical method is, right? So it's a very simple, in a similar manner as you are grinding this, uh, what do you say, beads to make flour. 
इट्स द सेम मेथड व्हिच वी आर यूजिंग चक्की जिसको आप बुलाते हो ठीक है सो दैट इज द सेम मेथड व्हिच वी आर यूजिंग ओवर हियर द मैकेनिकल सस्पेंशन मेथड द सेकंड मेथड व्हिच वी यूज दैट इज पेप्टाइजेशन व्हाट आर वी डूइंग इन दिस मेथड इन पेप्टाइजेशन we are converting a freshly prepared electrolyte freshly prepared electrolyte into a colloid theek hai so we are putting or we are converting a freshly prepared electrolyte into a colloid how by adding a suitable medium by adding a suitable medium this is what the process of peptidization is so peptidization basically if you define it it is the conversion of a freshly prepared electrolyte into a colloid by adding a suitable medium theek hai that is what peptidization is let's say for example we can say that we are taking fecl3 okay now fecl3 that is what uh, a medium which we are adding to a freshly prepared <coughs> solution of ferric hydroxide okay now due to the absorption of the common ions over here you can see that this has fecl3 this also has feo uh, fe as a common ion so what is going to happen over here the size of feoh3 is very very small so this the ions fe3 positive ions which are present in ferric chloride they are going to be selectively absorbed on the surface of ferric hydroxide theek hai they are going to be selectively absorbed as a result of which the particle size of ferric hydroxide that increases and comes in the range of the colloidal particle okay so the colloid that is formed this is known as the selective adsorption method have you understood so peptidization kya ho raha hai ki we are taking a freshly prepared uh, electrolyte uske andar hum log ek koi aisa solution dal rahe hain which has common ions these common ions they are getting selectively adsorbed on the surface and hence the size that is becoming in the range of the colloidal particle size theek hai ओके फिर उसके बाद एक और मेथड हम यूज करते हैं व्हिच इज नोन एज द ब्रेडिक्स आर्क मेथड इन केस ऑफ ब्रेडिक्स आर्क मेथड वी टेक अ ट्राफ व्हिच हैज अ लॉट ऑफ आइस दिस इज द आइस बाथ एंड इनसाइड दैट we immerse a beaker theek hai in the beaker there is say we are taking water over here in this water we are dipping metal electrodes like this and these metal electrodes they are attached to a high voltage of battery right then a current is passed through these electrodes at a very very high voltage at such a high voltage that these metal electrodes they start melting theek hai when they will melt the temperature of water is very very low as a result of which they will immediately precipitate or they will immediately form plastic kind of a colloid right now why it is known as bredig's arc method this process that was given by bredig the scientist bredig so after his name arc over here is that as soon as a very high voltage that is applied uh, on these electrodes an electric arc can be seen at this point so that is why this method that is known as bredig's arc method theek hai clear ho gaya fir uske baad the next method the second type of method which we are going to use they are the chemical methods these were the dispersion methods second method of preparation is the chemical methods chemical methods they are generally used to prepare leucophobic colloids theek hai so 
because we say that the uh, leucopic colloids they are chemical in nature, they are not physical. Okay, so they are all chemical substances as a result of which we use chemical methods. For example, if we want to make a colloid of arsenic sulfide, in this case we react arsenic oxide with enormous water, okay? sorry, not with water, with hydrogen sulfide. When we get a cold solution of arsenic sulfide, okay? so this is going to behave as a colloid. Right? Then after that, if we are taking, we want to prepare a colloid of ferric hydroxide. In this case, we take freshly prepared ferric chloride and we react it with water in order to get a colloid of ferric oxide. Okay? And we are getting LCL. Right? So over here, all these they are prepared by chemical methods. Right? Then there are a number of metals. You can write down number of metals like silver, gold and platinum are obtained by obtained by reducing aqueous solutions of their salts aqueous solutions of their salts. Okay? So this is another method. Then after that, a colloidal solution of sulfur, if you want to prepare, it can be prepared by the oxidation of H2S to give us a sole of sulfur. This is a sole of sulfur which is prepared over here. Okay? Then if a solution of sulfur in alcohol is added to water, what will happen? We have taken sulfur in alcohol and we add it to water. In that case also a colloid of sulfur can be formed. Right? So these are a few methods of preparation. This is all what we are going to do today. Now tomorrow we are going to do the purification of the colloids which we have made. Right? Today whatever we have prepared today, tomorrow we are going to purify these colloids. The various methods like which you also use in biology that is dialysis and electrodialysis all that we are going to discuss tomorrow. In these methods the principal differences between the colloids and the true solutions that is kept in mind in order to purify the colloids. Basically what is happening is that all these colloids which we have formed today they all have impurities in the form of crystalloids. Right? Crystalloids are electrolytes which are present. So these electrolytes, they have to be separated from the colloids so as to get pure colloids. Okay? So in the next lecture, we are going to do that. Okay?